guys and welcome back. I am Ashley with Lavish Grace Photography and I am filming in a different spot because I'm going to be showing you how I use the Westcott FJ400 to take some pictures. So ignore this lighting. I only have one LED panel set up right here, but I just have a paper backdrop that's um, <laughs> quite wrinkled, but that's fine. I'm going to show you, if you are a natural light photographer, you don't have to be afraid of strobe. I recently bought the FJ400 and was amazed at how simple it is to use strobe lighting for portraits, headshots, pretty much anything you need. I can even take group shots with this and it is insanely simple. The light is beautiful. You just need to figure out the right modifier for what it is you're looking for, but I'm going to show you what I use, how I use it, how I set it up and show you some headshots I'm going to take right now. <laughs> of me with the Westcott FJ400. So that's what we're doing. I'm basically just showing you how easy it is to use a strobe. And yes, it can get complicated. And yes, lighting is something that you're constantly learning. I don't know everything. Basically, this is just to encourage you if you are a natural light photographer, this is to encourage you to branch out, try some strobe, you won't regret it. Yeah, let's, I guess, just get into this. So we are just in my living room and I'm fixing to take pictures with this camera. So I'm gonna get my little Sony to record some behind the scenes of uh, what we're doing, but I will show you close up of the FJ400 and show you how I turn it on, how I set it up and all of that jazz. So let's take some portraits. So I have the transmitter on the camera. You literally turn this on, turn that on, and um, on channel A, I can adjust the brightness and it adjusts it on the FJ400 for me. I have this with a lantern softbox. This is what I recommend if you want the most natural window light kind of light. And literally, I just set this up and I start shooting. I put this right about here. So about a 45 degree angle from where I'll be standing. And we're going to take some headshots and see what this looks like. All right. So to take my headshots, I just put the camera on timer mode and have my remote shutter from Canon. And this is how I take my headshots. So a tip when you are taking your headshots, um, if you have the Canon R6 anyways. Um, I go into the menus, into the autofocus. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so I have continuous AF disabled because I hate the sound. When, even when I'm not pushing the button halfway down, it's trying to focus. Well, in this instance, I want it to continuously autofocus. That way it actually focuses on my face. Okay, um, another thing, this will help the camera to focus is you just push the on button and it turns on the model light. That way it'll put a little bit of light on my face so the camera can focus a little bit better. So let's talk a little bit about strobe lighting 101. First of all, I want to talk about why I picked this particular strobe. I was debating between brands and I ended up going with the Westcott mainly because of 
the transmitter that it comes with. Most transmitters have to, you have to buy a specific one for a certain camera brand. This one has a button where you can switch through all the different camera brands. It actually even worked with the Leica Q2 when I rented that camera. I put it on Sony setting and it worked on it. So it will work on a variety of different cameras. That's one of the reasons that I picked the Westcott. Um, but the FJ400, I love, first of all, the screen. Um, I love that it has the number there, giant. And I love that it's so easy to change the power setting from the camera or on this directly. That's enough about the specific strobe that I chose. But several things I've discovered that I love about shooting with the strobe is one consistent color of light. When you're using natural light, you have so many different colors of light depending on time of day, depending on what the light's reflecting off of. There's so many things that determine the color of light. But I love having just that nice, clean white light makes editing so much easier. Another thing I love about using strobes is there's so much you can do um, using different light modifiers. Now I have stuck with the lantern so far, but there's so many things you can do and it's so easy. Bring your light closer, further from your subject, move it a little bit, and you have a completely different look. The things that I mostly use my strobe for are one, newborn shoots is completely changed my newborn lighting um, before i would have to use a flash and try and bounce it off of a wall or a ceiling it's not always reliable and it's you never know what you're going to get into when you go into somebody's home to do uh, newborns you don't know what their house is going to look like and this is consistent light that i know is going to work and i know exactly how to set it up so newborns great with strobe lighting i would like to do another video on using strobe lighting with natural lighting. So if you would like to see that, let me know. Um, my entire senior model shoot that I did this past summer, I used the natural lighting coming in the window with a little bit of strobe as well. You can take this outside and use it. I'll put a picture here of Kylie that I took with the strobe outside and I love the effect. So if you are used to just using natural light, I. I personally still love using natural light and most of my shoots that's what I use but I love breaking this out for some specialty shots but again super simple turn it on turn the transmitter on put your giant globe on it and start shooting it's that simple it's not something you should be intimidated intimidated by and it's I can't believe I put it off for so long purchasing a strobe. Now there's several other ones that you can buy. This is just the one that I felt would be the easiest for me to use. Yes, I know that I didn't have a ton of information in this. I just wanted a little intro into strobe, show you how I set it up and how I use it. I'm going to be doing another shoot with my sister and I may bring the strobe along and get a little behind the scenes from that where I'm using natural light and the strobe. I'm gonna put some photos in here now that I took using the Westcott FJ400. Some of these are actually outside, some of them are inside, some are um, product photography, different things. And I just want to show you some examples right here. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope that this was helpful. Again, this was just an introduction. If you have been using strobe, this probably uh, was not beneficial for you at all. But these are from my fellow natural light photographers who are wanting to or are interested in getting into strobe. Let me know what you would like to see next. I have a video coming up in the next few weeks uh, where I'm going to be trying out a new Fujifilm camera. I am so excited to test this camera out, but that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and want to see future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you guys next time. Photos that I've taken using the waist, waist caught. Is my microphone on? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but I'm gonna throw some photos in here of some. I'm gonna. You can do it. <laughs>